holding offenses. Exactly. You have to let go. Exactly. And it says many are asleep and sick among us. Exactly. And so God, he wasn't, you were still under construction and he wasn't finished. <laughs> yet. Exactly. Exactly. But it's a scary feeling. It was extremely scary when I found out that I should not have been taking communion unless I had forgiven. And that's, that is the key point. Don't you agree, Pastor? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. One thing about, uh, about unforgiveness is that um, uh, it's so easily to misunderstand what God says about unforgiveness. It, uh, if there's an ought with a brother or a sister, you must go to that person exactly. before you can go to God. Exactly. Uh, God leaves an open avenue for us to help ourselves help them, to forgive them ourselves. And, and forgiving a person means to let it go. Mm -hmm. Because you can go and say the words. A lot of times we, we say the words and we say the words because they With sound lips. good and, they, <laughs> and it's the right thing to do, but we don't really mean what we're actually saying. Mm -hmm. So we carry on. We'll go right up to, to a person and says, I, I forgive you for that. And we'll put special emphasis on why we're forgiving them and we'll add all these different avenues to that. And that's not real unforgiveness. We want to tell them, I'm forgiving you because, and so on and so on. And what we need to do is this, forgiveness means to let it go. Just let it, let it go. Exhale. Let it, let it be what it is and, and, and move on. But Pastor, what about uh, the saying uh, that I would forgive you, but I won't forget what you've done to me? That's not what God said. No. And, 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 and let's, be, let's, let's speak real about this. You may not ever forget what has happened. But you can also forgive what has happened to you. Uh, many times we don't just forget what happened to us. I mean, we, we, were, we have great memories. We're right. just like a download computer. We, we always remember, but it's not the memory that's going to affect you if you give that away. It's just like having a, a something that is very important to you. If you give it away, you're going to continue to have the memory of it, exactly. but it's gone. It's gone. You're going to remember it. I really, it's, it's like giving birth to a child. You gave birth to that child and they upset you certain times, but you don't forget about that you had it. <laughs> you know, um, as we commit sin and we repent, the Lord throws it, our sin, into a sea of forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. But it's hard for us to do that. We want to hold on and, mm -hmm. and say, I forgive you, but I'm not going to forget what you did. And so that's just saying it with your mouth, but not meaning it with your heart. Yeah, and if you look at that, he said he will. He never told us. He said, I will throw it into the lake of unforgiveness. He said he will do that, not us. We'll always remember. I mean, we remember things that, whether they're good or bad, we, we've got great memories. God's given a mind that, that to have a good memory and remember things that were, you know, were affected to us in either way, good or bad. Uh, one of the things that we must understand about the bitterness is that there is a way to get rid of bitterness. There, there's a way. Yes. And uh, if, if you would look, and, and it's a good illustration I like to give, um, if you get a, cl a glass of water, fill the glass of water all the way to the top, and the water that you put in there is dirty, you ask yourself, how do I get this water that's dirty out of this glass without breaking it or without tipping it over and pouring the water out? And it's the same way that you have to take on bitterness. The water, the glass is full of water. The, the water that's in the glass is dirty. The only way that you can get clean water into that glass without breaking it or tipping it over or trying to empty it is to pour clean water continuously in the dirty water. And after you continue to pour the clean water in there, the dirty water rises up and it comes out of the glass. And it's the same thing with bitterness. You have to constantly pour into yourself exactly. positive, great things, things that God wants you to know and, and be around positive people, people that are say good things to you. And that bitterness begins to rise up out on the surface. And a lot of time, people are in denial. And uh, that's where presumption com comes in. Uh, they perceive things in a different way. And I was talking about this yesterday at dinner. Uh, even a text, you, 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 you have to be careful of the language in a text because you can text me something, but I can perceive 
whether you are angry with me or you're not. Uh, a message uh, uh, through email, the same way. This is why I like to talk with people eye to eye or, you know, on the telephone because I need to hear the tone because I can assume that your tone is, is upset. You're upset with me for no apparent reason. So these are things that are happen, happening in the church. Mm -hmm. People are, they pass you by. Sometimes you don't even see them. Or your mind is in another, going in another direction. And people will get angry because they say, I passed right by you and you didn't speak to me. So now they're angry. And, but I didn't see you. So now I'm apologizing for something that I didn't even do. So it takes us right back to the Bible. And uh, again, I say that we're in the denial. We just don't want to accept it. Mm -hmm. And we have to realize that this is in the atmosphere. Yes. Because the enemy know that his time is just about up. So we need to adhere and adhere to the call of God. And we need to, and, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, the only way that I can get this out of me is I had to continue to clean myself yes. up. Yes. I had to fast and pray. And I constantly did it for years, and I'm still doing it today because I know how I am. And I was, you know, I provoked it a lot of people too. I'm not ashamed to say it. But I provoked them through bitterness, mm -hmm. and which is not a good thing. So this is why, why we have to look at the church, and we have to tell the church that you do not have to go. And people are coming to the church. I came to the church because I knew that the church would help me. And true enough, they have helped me. And I'm still here 30 years later. So I thank God for that. But they taught me how to fast. They taught me how to pray. They taught me how to read the Word of God. And the Word of God is a keeper. I don't care what anybody say. I can listen to you all day long. You can preach to me all day long. But I need to read it for myself. Yes. I need to read it for myself. I also want to say to our listeners that um, forgiveness sometimes is not easy, but call on and ask God to help you exactly. to forgive. It's it's gradual steps. You can't do it on your own. You cannot do it on your own. And if you've been struggling with this for years, it is because you need to call on the Lord with a contrite spirit. You have to totally be sincere and ask for the help and ask and you shall receive. And, and I just want to ask you, um, if we can go into a word of prayer yes. for those that are just um, struggling and, and just they want to forgive, but they just don't know how or what, and, and they've been so traumatized. Let, let's go into a word of prayer for uh, our listeners and friends that are just dealing with some things right now. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you now for this opportunity, thank Father, you. to present these issues that we are concerned about unto you. We ask now, Lord God, that you would touch every soul, Father, that has experienced this bitterness. Yes. We ask, Father, that you would not only touch them, but that you would give them wisdom yes. to understand, Father, how to get rid of it and what to do. We ask, Father, that you would strengthen them now, Father, that they would not be ashamed of what bitterness has brought in their lives, mm -hmm. that they would not cover it up any longer. We ask now, Holy Spirit, that you would move upon them, that they would be so convicted that things will line up for them now, Father, to come seek you even the more, to understand, Father, that there is an issue, there is a virus that's growing inside of them that is causing a problem not only in them but in the world. We ask, Father, now that you would wash it clean. Pull it out of us now, Father. Pull it down out of us now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, for your word doing exactly what it has been sent out to do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, I'd like you to give us some contact information if someone is interested in purchasing a bitter disease called unforgiveness. You can uh, purchase the book from my office, uh, 3774 Grove Street. And that's Lemon Grove, 91945. Or you can go on my blog, and uh, we have a blog site, The Root of Bitterness, a blog site, or Joanne Smith Hooks. You can just Google my name in. Or you can email me at jhooks 
1636 at gmail.com. jhook1636 at gmail.com. And we just want to remind you to come on out uh, to the upper room located at 6381 Imperial Avenue every Tuesday evening, effective May 22nd for a seven-week series on the Root of Bitterness. And it is a free course. Just come on out. Uh, there will be a Root of Bitterness workbook available for the price of $10 that will help you uh, as you go through this course. So just come on out, bring a friend, uh, you know, partner with someone, and, and come on out and, and be delivered and be set free. And Sister Janice, can I tell about some of the things that we're going to be talking about in the Root of Bitterness? Yes, we will discuss that when we come back. We're going to pause okay. for a commercial break.